There's something special about driving a Daihatsu from Japan. Back in 1987, Japanese automaker Daihatsu first entered the United States with its high jet utility trucks, followed by the Charade Subcompact and the Rocky Mini SUV to get a piece of America's growing economy car market. Although partly owned by Toyota, they were quickly outnumbered by so many larger competitors, so much so that they quietly left the U.S. less than five years later. This is a story of the Daihatsu Motor Company and their failed attempt to sell cars in America. This is my old car. It's how we make them. Daihatsu. Thanks to all of you who requested that I do an episode on Daihatsu. I admittedly have forgotten about these cars myself, but was reminded many times thanks to this viewer who has been requesting it regularly for the past few weeks. Hope you like it. If you haven't already, sign up to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash myoldcar to see these episodes a few days earlier than everybody else. Although it is rare to see a Daihatsu model on U.S. roads today, they had been in business many years before the 1980s and are still in business today, although since 2016, they are now a wholly owned subsidiary of Toyota. Although the company was founded as Daihatsu in 1951, it was formed originally as a Hatsudoki Seizo company in 1907 by a group of professors at Osaka University to develop a small stationary engine that later led to building steam and diesel engines for rail locomotives. In the 1930s, they found more success with vehicles such as the Model HA, a three-wheeled motorcycle with a small pickup bed. After World War II, the demand for small utility trucks was on the rise, and Daihatsu found even more success with a three-wheeled truck called the Midget, which by 1960 had sold over 100,000 units including exports to other Southeast Asian countries. They also expanded to four-wheel cars, such as the Compagno in 1963, which was sold as a sedan, pickup, wagon, and convertible. But in order to move beyond Southeast Asia and to compete against much larger rivals abroad, they needed a partner, Enter Toyota, who officially formed an alliance with Daihatsu in 1967. In their home market of Japan, Daihatsu became most popular for their K-cars. And I'm not talking about this K-car. The Japanese K-car is spelled, at least outside of Japan, as K-E-I, and began as a legal class of minicars designed to help expand the car industry in Japan after World War II. Today, they are a popular import to the U.S. for those old enough to be legally imported. Daihatsu's mini trucks were their most popular K-cars, so much so that they chose one of their trucks to be their first car to export to America, the Hijet, in 1987. By this point, the Hijet was already in its seventh generation, designated the S80 or S81 for the four-wheel drive version. With only a half-liter, three-cylinder engine, it was more like the equivalent of today's ATVs, meant for short distances around job sites or around town, not the highway. Today in the U.S., there may now be more right-hand drive versions of these trucks that were imported by private buyers, long after Daihatsu stopped selling left-hand drive versions here. But the Hijet was just the first step in Daihatsu's plan to make a name for themselves in the United States. The following year, 1988, Daihatsu introduced two new vehicles to be sold in the U.S. The first was a hatchback that had been sold in Japan since 1977 and was now beginning its third generation, called the Charade. The car, the Daihatsu Charade. One test drive will show you why this new car from Japan has everyone so excited. This was a name which, and this is just a guess on my part, may have been thought up by somebody in Japan who didn't really know what the word meant in English. Oh, I know. You can play charades. If something is referred to as a charade, it's meant it's an imitation, not the real thing, or worse yet, it's a fake. So the charade already had one strike against it just because of the name. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Before it arrived in America, Daihatsu exported the charade with the option of a one liter turbocharged three cylinder engine, such as this example from Australia, called the G11 Charade Turbo, which had, at the time, one of the smallest turbochargers ever installed in a production car. The Americans also got the three-cylinder engine, but of course, minus the turbo. The public response to this engine, which took 15 seconds to reach 60 miles per hour, as well as only offering a manual transmission, was so negative that it forced Ahatsu to make a change for the next year, now offering a 1.3-liter four-cylinder and the option of an automatic, which made 1989 its best sales year, with just over 15,000 sold. However, to put that in perspective, Toyota sold almost 200,000 Corollas that same year. For 1990, Daihatsu began offering a four-door sedan version of the Charade. Yet despite this, the combined sales of both a hatchback and sedan dropped to just over 10,000 that year, making the likelihood of seeing a Charade sedan on the road today very rare. Along with the Charade, Daihatsu also introduced a mini SUV to the U.S. called the Rocky. Although some in America back then may have associated the name Rocky with this guy, or maybe even this guy, 
the Daihatsu initially used the Rocky name on a different SUV model that it exported starting in 1984, the F70 and F80 series, and called it the Rugger in their home market. When they exported the Rugger to other countries, it was sold under different names, including the Rocky in Australia, Go Rocky, show me the way. but also the 4Track in the UK, and the Feroza in Indonesia. But America didn't get that version. Instead, Daihatsu released a new, slightly smaller version, called the F300 series, in 1988 and decided to use the Rocky name on the US model, which, unlike the Charade, was a name that better fit the purpose of the car, since it was intended to be an off-road focused SUV. Although it didn't have as much direct competition as the Charade, the Rocky's closest competitor at its launch was the Suzuki Samurai, and was soon joined afterwards by the slightly larger Suzuki Sidekick and its twin, the Geo Tracker. And all those cars were an attempt to unseat the leader of small off-road focused convertible SUVs back then, the Jeep Wrangler. Like its competitors, the Rocky was a two-door convertible, but it also had a feature that soon proved to be a significant advantage over the Samurai. The advantage the Rocky has over a lot of its competitors is uh, quite a bit wider. With the Rocky being about 10 inches wider than the Samurai. The same year that the Rocky began sales in the US was the same year that Suzuki's reputation was nearly destroyed, thanks to a Consumer Reports article alleging the Samurai could easily roll over, making that one a good choice for a future My Old Car episode. Unlike the Charade's three-cylinder engine, the Rocky debuted in the U.S. with a 1.6-liter four-cylinder engine and offered rear or four-wheel drive, and the latter could also be switched to low and high-end gearing via a switch just in front of the manual transmission gear stick. And that manual transmission was the only one available for the Rocky, which was great for more hardcore off-road enthusiasts. But the typical driver, at least in the U.S., preferred an automatic, and of course still does today. Considering how much more commonplace manual transmission cars are outside of the U.S., I suspect that the U.S. market would have been the only one that the Rocky could have benefited from the automatic transmission option. And considering less than 300 were sold in the U.S. in 1989, they probably couldn't justify the development cost. By 1990, sales of the Rocky hit their peak of just over 4,300 units in the U.S. Some of that gain may have been at the expense of the Samurai, which only sold around 5,000 units in 1989, a dramatic fall from over 83,000 just two years earlier. The bad press from the Consumer Reports scandal could have been the break Dahatsu needed for the Rocky to move ahead, but instead, sales of the Rocky dropped to only around 2,700 for 1991. Sales of the Charade had also dropped for 1991, down to only around 6,200, which was a drop in the bucket compared to what their partner Toyota was selling. Although technically there was a 1992 model year for both Dahatsu models in the US, it was over by February that year. Toyota continued to offer support of Dahatsu vehicles through 2002, Although what I haven't been able to confirm is if that end date had been pre-planned, or if they simply ran out of parts and mechanics who knew how to work on those cars. By 1998, Toyota increased their ownership of Daihatsu to just over 51%, and Daihatsu continued to export vehicles to countries other than the U.S. But despite long-established operations in many countries, their market share continued to decline, so much so that even after 40 years, Daihatsu left the Australian market in 2005. They managed to stay in New Zealand until 2013, but had to withdraw thanks to upcoming new regulations that their older vehicles simply couldn't comply with. That same year, Daihatsu also left the European market, having been in business there since 1979, citing cost increases that they couldn't pass on to their buyers due to so much competition. By 2016, Toyota purchased all of Daihatsu's remaining assets, making them a wholly owned subsidiary of Toyota, thereby eliminating any possible competition, however little, that they could ever create. Today, Daihatsu continues with what they proved to do best over a half century earlier, building and selling K-cars in Japan. And many of those K-cars, which are now over 25 years old, can be legally imported into America, where they have a strong fan base. And I suspect many of those owners weren't even born yet when the first little Daihatsu trucks were driven on U.S. soil. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid-2000s that you rarely see today, and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. Sort of feels like love. It's you, it's you, die